In this tutorial, you're going to find out how to combine the power of parametric modeling with Grasshopper with the power of Revit and its beam capabilities. You've probably heard by now about this tool called Rhino inside Revit. So let's dive right in and see what this tool is all about. Hey guys, Dushan here. Welcome to another How to Rhino tutorial. This time we're going to talk about Rhino inside Revit. A lot of you wanted to know more about this tool, so let me show you the magic Rhino inside can do. With the single slider, you can change the footprint size of this building. You can modify both X and Y size. You can modify the floor height of the building. You can modify the amount of floors you want to have. You can modify the design of the building using Graph Mapper by changing the rotation, changing the scale or both. The design changes we do in Grasshopper is automatically going to be applied in our project in Revit. Pretty sweet, right? Here, you can modify the levels directly from our Grasshopper script. You can even change their names parametrically and we'll be seeing those right away in Revit Live. This one is responsible for the creation of floors in Revit, which were made by using our closed rectangles that were rotated in Grasshopper. This component allows us to create walls in Revit based on our curves from Grasshopper and choose the type of walls that we have available from our Revit file. And this last component is used to create railings. Again, we're using curves from Grasshopper and updating it live through Revit. All right, so now I'm going to give you an overview of this workflow and what was the process of thinking when it comes to creating a tower like this in Grasshopper. Please keep in mind that we didn't put any structural elements on this building, so this wouldn't be able to stand in real life. However, I encourage you to actually try it yourself and add some columns and maybe in the future we'll create a tutorial that explains just that, how to create all of the structural elements as well. This is a fairly simple definition uh, that we have in Grasshopper. But before I explain the definition, I just want to show you how uh, Run Inside works. So here you will have Run Inside tab. And the thing that you need to do first is click on, on Start button. And that will activate all of these buttons here. When I click on Open Viewport, this is going to show me uh, my opened Rhino Rhino viewport and also my Grasshopper file. One thing that, that you can note here that we have this option of shaded um, wire on and off. So this means that I'm now in, in Revit and you can see I'm moving here. I can rotate around and I can see uh, the project from Grasshopper. However, if I turn this off, I will not see anything. So this means that this geometry is still not so-called baked uh, into Revit. Uh, if the geometry is not baked, you can actually uh, see it if you just turn on the shaded uh, shaded mode. You can decide if you want to see like the preview of this project in Rhino directly or if you want to do the preview uh, here in Revit. One thing that uh, you can do, for example, if you want to bake this, right now I have this definition uh, all done, but uh, if I want to bake it, all I need to do here is, uh, is click on recompute and that will activate all of the, the segments from my Grasshopper definition. And now you will see that I'm going to have all of the Revit families. So for example, if I turn the, sh uh, the shaded off, you will see that now when I click here, it's going to be a floor. It's going to be according to the certain level. Uh, if I zoom in, I can also click on the doors. I can click on the curtain panels and everything that we have uh, in the definition. Also. Okay, and then if you open up um, Rhino, you will see as well that we're going to have this kind of dashed lines. And this means that our geometry is baked into Revit. And that's that's why you have these kind of uh, dashed lines here. All right, so now I'm going to briefly walk you through the concept of, of this building. So the whole idea behind, uh, behind the process is that we want to have one rectangle at the bottom. It's this one. And we want to rotate that rectangle as it grows up. So as it goes, as it goes up, you will see that we have more and more and more of these rectangles. And then you will see that they are going to be rotating uh, around it, uh, the axis on the middle. If I go to the top, you will see here that uh, the rotation is happening from the bottom until until the roof. And, and also we have the scaling factor included. Not only do we have the scaling happening here, we also have the rotation happening at the same time. And that's the whole idea. The whole idea is that we have this rectangle on the bottom. This is the first one, this one. And then the next one is going to be slightly smaller and then slightly smaller. And then as it grows up, it's going to, you know, come back to its original size. 
that's the idea and again you can control the rotation of these rectangles that are gonna rotate around the middle axis of all of these planes that's what this part of the definition is gonna do it's gonna allow us to uh to create that kind of effect and then when it comes to uh, when it comes to running side uh part that's only connected with these these four elements here so and this one creating walls floor plates and everything in run inside can be done through curves so this means that for example we have let's say you have this curve here this is the curve this is the the plate of that curve and then on the inside we also have one uh, offset line which is going to be used for our railing and then we have another one which is going to be used for our walls so if you look from the top view that's going to look something like this but you're going to have the this is the curve for the slab then we're going to have one curve inside which is going to be for the uh, railing and then one more curve for the walls inside so that's the idea we have we have three curves that we're going to use for uh, the creation of our Revit elements and then we also have this part which, which is going to be responsible for the levels you can see how many levels we have here now i'm going to briefly uh, explain the definition here uh, so we have only at the beginning we had a rectangle right we had a rectangle this rectangle is going to be uh, copied uh, multiple times as you can see here and then we're going to use uh, the rotation to rotate this and you can see how it's rotating around the the axis and then after that we're going to use the scale to scale it up and then that's the final result that uh that we're gonna get here so you can see how we move the scale and uh rotation and then we have the rotation elements and you have the scaling elements that we can modify and based on these curves here now i'm going to change this just to show you based on these curves this is going to be the rotation for example you can see how my my curves here are going to change and also they're going to change in rabbit life so for example if i change this uh from 30 degrees to let's say 60 degrees you will see that here my rotation is going to change automatically both in Revit and in Rhino. The idea here with, with Revit is that sometimes when you change this, um, then all the things, uh, these elements here get messed up, just like you can see now. So the workaround that I found, uh, I'm not sure if this is the, the only workaround, but uh, you can do what you can do. You can simply select everything. You can unpin it and then delete it. And then you can simply click on recompute one more time. And that's gonna give you the, the good result at the end so you can see how quickly it is to finish off as i said this uh this uh this part here controls the floor height it controls also the the amount of floors so for example if you change here 30 that's gonna give us more floors and it's gonna give us a different height all right so let's continue let's see how continue from here so how you can use these uh curves to create the slabs so here in this area we just did a simple extrusion and we got uh, we got those slabs here. Uh, this is only the preview here for the for the Rhino, but we're not gonna use these these B reps. We're only gonna use the the curves. After we create that, uh, what we have here is the location for the walls. If you click on this uh, color index uh, element here, you will see that now we have these green curves that we're going to use to uh, create our walls. This is going to be the position for our walls, and then the extrusion is gonna fill up those walls. That's the idea here. And then the same the same concept applies with the railing location. We have those curves located here, and then we just extrude them up until we get that final result. And now we have this you know, done completely in Rhino, but also we have those curves which we can use to create Revit elements. And this is exactly what we did here. So first thing we did, we created some levels. And you can see here that we have Revit element and it is located here under model, you have add level and you have a couple of inputs, type and name. This is the place where we choose annotation category speaker. This is where it's located. And then we have also element type picker. This is gonna give us the levels from our Revit file. And then once we create that, we also have the naming, and this is our names for the levels. So I'll just show you this quickly. If you make a panel here, you will see that our name is gonna be level one, level two, all the way until level 20. And you can see the same levels here that we have in Grasshopper. Uh, again, if you change this to something like, like floors, you will see that that's gonna automatically be changed in our Revit file, which is quite cool, which means that you can uh, parametrically change those. 
And then we have these three elements. So we have Revit floors, Revit railing, and Revit wall curve added by curve. So these three are actually creating the floors. We have the levels that we just created, and we also have the type of our floor, which we can choose from here based on our Revit file. The boundary is gonna be those curves that we created, if you remember previously. And the same story would go for the Revit railing. We would use the curves uh, from here. We would use these curves for railing. And then for the Revit walls, we would use the curves which we created from here. And they go into these inputs where we have the curve. And the only difference here for the walls would be that uh, we cannot necessarily have something like a closed curve and then uh, use it as a wall to extrude it. We actually need to split this curve into four different segments. We have to have separate segments of a single curve and then put it on the correct uh, on the correct slab or correct level. And that's why here we have the graph tree and we have the exploded curves, which means that we're gonna have more curves in the same level, just like you can see here. So this is level one, level two, level three, uh, and so on. And that would be the short explanation of this definition. So we used a couple of options. We used add floors, we used add railing, we used uh, add wall, and we used uh, add level to get all of this information from our Revit file. And we did all of the geometry change directly here in uh, Grasshopper. And as you can see, we have the final model done directly in Revit. And the cool thing here is that we can use the power of Revit families. For example, here we can change uh, the type from let's 0.9 to 1.1. We can change the height of this family and it's gonna be changed throughout the whole project. This way we're combining the power of parametric design from Grasshopper and also the power of uh, parametric families within Revit. In the extended version of this tutorial, which is available on our Patreon page, we're going to explain this exact Grasshopper definition in great detail, going slowly with a step-by-step -step approach so you'll be able to better understand the process of creating this uh, tower structure. On top of that, you'll get full access to all of our extended tutorials and project files. The link to join our Patreon page is in the description. If you're in architecture and you're interested in learning more about running Grasshopper, but you're tired of searching through thousands of tutorials online and wasting so much time doing that, and you're looking for a structured learning approach with one-on-one -on -one support, We've created a course called Rhino for Architects that will guide you through all of the basics of both Rhino and Grasshopper. In addition to that, we will be covering some advanced modeling techniques using subdivision tools for Rhino 7, which will allow you to create any kind of geometrical shape that you imagine. When it comes to Grasshopper, we'll explain every single component with examples and homework files, so even if you're a total beginner, you'll be able to understand the logic and mathematics behind the program. On top of that, we'll teach you all about various plugins for Rhino that are used in architecture, such as V-Ray, Visual Arc, and even Bungo for architectural animation. Lastly, we will cover architectural presentation, creation of diagrams, and a couple of case study projects. If this sounds something like you'd like to check out, feel free to schedule a free Zoom call with us. On this Zoom call, we'll evaluate your current skill sets, determine if the course can help you out, and on top of that, we'll share our learning platform with you, so you can get a better idea of how that all looks on the inside. Click on the link below, and we'll talk soon.